Right, uh, welcome. My name is Saren. In today's video, we want to look at how to process back orders on Sage Pastel Pattern. So we'll start uh, by looking at the theoretical background of back orders. Uh, let me just share my screen, which has got that background, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we would start by defining what a back order is. A back order is an order for a good or a service that cannot be filled at the current time due to lack of available supply. In other words, a customer comes through, wants to buy a product or a service, but the business doesn't have that product in stock at that moment. The item may not be held the item may not may not be held in the company's available inventory, but could still be in production. Especially for manufacturing companies, uh, the item could be manufactured, uh, but because of that, it becomes a big order. Or the company may need to still manufacture more of the product. Big orders are an indication that demand for a company's product outweighs its supply. They may also be known as the company's backlog. So basically, this is how a back order arises. A customer comes through, wants to buy a product or a service, and we do not have that product or service in stock at that given time. But it can be produced or it can be procured. Now, one would want to know how do I process those back orders on Sage Pastel Partner. That is the purpose of this tutorial. And uh, uh, just to give you a few of how you do it on Sage, let me just uh, share this screen. So basically, if you were to raise a back order on Sage Pastel Partner, we could come to process, uh, then we come to customer, right? Uh, customers, when you click on customers, you find uh, it's going to bring up a window on which we can now uh, process the back order. So basically here, we could uh, then select sales order. So we use sales order window to uh, account for back orders, right? Now, let's go back to our notes so that we see the further notes that we are, uh, we see the further notes and the examples that we can use, right? Now, what are the account accounting entries to record a back order? When a customer places an order that is uh, placed on back order, any payment made by the customer is recorded uh, as a credit on the customer's account. So we are saying when a customer comes through, places an order as a back order, the, 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 the a sales order is done on the Sage Pastel Partner, then the payment is processed via the cash book. We're going to see an example, right? When that is done, the customer's account is credited with that amount. Once the back ordered items have been delivered to the customer and invoice is raised, the customer and the customer's account is what? Is debited. So the initial stage is a order is, is placed, a sales order is done, then the customer pays, the payment is processed via the cash book, right? Then when the customer now, when the goods are delivered for the back ordered items, an invoice is raised, which then debits the customer C account. If the customer make no cash payment upfront, a source order of the back order is recorded. So if the customer doesn't pay anything when the back order is done, we we only we only raise the sales order. When the order is fulfilled the, uh, and delivered, an invoice is done with the which debits the customer's account. And when payment is received, it is processed through the cash book, which debits the customer's account, right? Which credit is actually the customer's account. So basically. This is how you process back orders. Now we want to look at an example which we're going to process on Sage Pastel. We have got this, we have got this example, the customer places an order, which is a back order and pays in full. Uh, on 9 March, on 9 May, 2023, Mkubisi Resources Private Limited placed an order uh, number 8900 of 10 by ball joints for their Mazda B50 trucks and paid in full for the ball joints. Only five ball joints are in store. You are required to process this transaction on Sage Pastel Partner. Now we're going to go back to Sage Pastel Partner and see how do we process this transaction. So we'll come back here and we see our sales order is raised. 
is up here. So we process this sales order, we select on document type, we're selecting sales order. Then in here, we have got Mukubisi resources. So we select uh, the customer, then we proceed, right? When we proceed, we come here and put the order number, which is 8900, that is what we are given. Then we come in here, we select the item which they bought. We are told that it's a uh, Mazda uh, B50 ball joints. So we are selecting that. Then we are given the quantity is 10. So this is what they ordered. Uh, no, 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 see, 10 should come here. So the quantity is 10. So they ordered this and they paid in full. So we are just processing this sales order. Uh, we proceed by clicking on print. Uh, then we print the sales order for filing, right? So we command, okay, for filing, so that we print that sales order. Now, once it has been printed and filed, we now go on to do the invoice. Was it of the 10 that is that are required by the customer, we have got five. So we can process an invoice for those five. Right? And now how do we do it? We go back to document type and we select now text invoice. Right? When we select text invoice, we come here, we select the customer with McQuisi resources, uh, USD account, then we, we go there. Then the system will prompt us, right? There are outstanding sales orders for this customer. Do you want to link now? We then say, yes, we want to link. Then the document type, link to sales order. We then come here and look up for the sales order that we did, which is this one. Then we enter that sales order. Then we are taken to this. Now on quantity to use, we are putting five because those are the ones which are in stock. We can then tick on print remaining items as remarks on the text invoice. So only five have been supplied out of the 10 which the customer wanted. So this will give us a report which shows the items that remain outstanding. So we'll proceed and click on link. We'll be prompted link to sales order. You can now either leave the original document in place. We do not recommend this. Delete only used lines from the original document. This is what we recommend. Don't use, remove the whole original document. So we use this second option, delete only used lines from the original document. Then we just click on OK. Right. When we click on OK, our invoice is done. If we had set up our system to update on completion, it means we're just going to click on next document. Then our system or the invoice was going to be updated. But if we had not, it means you have to go to come to batch. Then we click on batch. Then we click on updates, right, to update this invoice. When we click on that, uh, the system will again prompt us to print. We can then proceed and print the invoice. Uh, once we have printed the invoice, the system will prompt us to update the invoice. We can do a backup before updating, but at times you just have to update without doing a backup for each invoice. So by so doing, what we have done is we have now processed an invoice of the five items that we had. The customer had ordered 10 items, right? So we'll close this, okay. If we, okay, maybe before we go on to see the reports uh, of the items which are still remaining on the order of the customer, uh, we now have to go and process the payment because we are told that the customer then paid for the order in full. In other words, the customer paid for the 10 ball joints, even though they received five. So we have to go and process the payment. And how do we do that? We come to process, then we come to cash book, then we process cash book, right? When we process cash book, uh, the system will open our cash books and then we'll select the appropriate cash book to process the payment. So let's say they did a deposit into CBZ Bank USD account. We then come to the receipt side, right? Then we need to know when the payment was done. It was done on 9 May. So we select the date, which is 9 May. Then on GCS, you need to know what that stands for. G for general ledger, C for customers, then S for suppliers. So in this case, we want to select C for customers. Then we come here, we select the customer. We process the invoice for. Then we proceed and we then again uh, proceed. We already have for the reference. Then we say payment for ball joints. Yeah, we just have to put 
as much detail as possible so that we know uh, uh, what was being paid for. So they paid, it was uh, $169. We just paid the round figure. We then have to proceed by punching tap on our computer keyboard, tap, tap, right? When we continue doing that, the system will prompt us, will prompt us and ask us to match the payment against the invoice. So we we'll make sure we've got this invoice that we did, which is for five ball joints. And uh, they paid one skisty nine. We are just going to make that invoice, then a credit will remain on their account. So we are matching that, then we just click on close. Uh, then he, the system will say, leave, uh, you have not matched the total amount, you may leave the rest unmatched, which we are going to do or complete the matching, adjust the uh, transaction value. We are going to leave the rest as unmatched. Because when they now come, when we now supply the remaining five, we'll do another invoice, which will match against the remaining balance. So we are going just to click OK. Once we have done that, we then now go on and update this page. So we click on update, then update this is page. Then the system, as always, may ask you to back up before updating or print page. Uh, in our case, we're just going to update. So when we update, we have completed the processing of this transaction. Now, we want to see the reports which are affected and how we can track and follow up on the outstanding orders. Now, for us to be able to view, especially the report which shows us the outstanding orders, we just come to view, then we come to customers, then we go to outstanding codes forward slash back orders. We can view these details by customer. So if you click details by customer, uh, you'd find it will bring us this uh, window. Then it is going to print to screen document type back orders. Then it will select our customers here. Then it will also select the period. Uh, yeah, if we are using foreign currents, it may say yeah, use foreign currents. If you want it to show gross profits, you can just put a tick there. Otherwise, you can just click on OK to view that report. So you'd find now we have got this report which shows the outstanding items, which are five. So it's outstanding recorders in customer sequence. So for this customer that we processed from Quiz Resources USD, we have got these board joins, five of them still are standing at this selling price and giving us this total price. So if we had the number of customers, they were going to be listed here. So this is a report you can print from time to time. You can check it every day so that you know how many quantities are remaining on a particular order which was processed by the customer. So if you were to view other reports which have got to do with the customer, we would just come to view, then we say again, customers, then uh, probably we could, uh, we could view, we could view, we could view the, the detailed ledger of the customer. So we come to view, then we say customers, then we come to detailed ledger, then we say by customer. We just want to see uh, the transactions which are on this customer's account. So I'm going to print to screen, and this is our customer, and we're printing for this period, and uh, each period uh, each period is separate. Then if you are happy with all the selections which are here, we then click on OK. You'd find now a detailed ledger for this customer's account is going to be shown, and you will see the transactions which have gone through. Now, the sales order is not a transaction document. It doesn't update your, your ledger. Right. What updates your ledger is the invoice that we did for five supplied ball joints and the payment which the customer did. So the balance on the customer's account will be 84. Right. So when they come and purchase the remaining, not purchase as such, when we deliver the remaining five, we raise an invoice. We raise an invoice which will knock off. So let's say, uh, just to complete the transaction so that you fully understand, let's say later on, we now we have got the remaining board joints in stock. What we only have to do is we have to come here and click on process, then click on customers. We are now supplying the remaining five board joints. Then this window for customer invoice will, re, will come up. Uh, so we've got the text invoice. We come there, we select the customer who is in Kubis, uh, uh, resources, then we proceed. Then the system will prompt us because we have got five items remaining on the sales order. So the, the system will prompt and say they are outstanding 
uh, sales orders for this customer. Do you want to link? We say yes. Now, uh, we then come here, we select the sales order number, which is this one. Then we enter, we proceed, right? Then how many items are to be, uh, items or quantity to use is five. Then we click on link, right? Then we are prompted uh, with this. And as I said, you select uh, the option number two, then you click on okay. Right, this invoice has been done. We now just have to update the invoice. So we click on batch, then we click on update. When we do that, uh, the system will prompt us. The customer reference number has already been used in invoice uh, for CISO. Do you want to continue? Yes, we want to both. We, this is the same order and uh, we want the same reference to be working. So we proceed by printing the invoice, was it just to accompany the products, then we are pro prompted to update, we then click on update. Now this completes the customer C transaction. If we were to go back to our reports, like starting with outstanding orders and click on view, then go to customers, then click on outstanding cost back orders and click on details by customer you'd find that report no longer has anything, right? If we click on OK to view details of that report, you'd find we're not going to see or to have any anything on that report. It's now blank. Because all the orders that were outstanding, we have managed to supply them. Now, we go and check the customer's detailed ledger, and we do that via view customers. Then we come to detailed ledger. Then we say, by customer. We just want to see what is now sitting on the customer's account in terms of invoices and debits. So we come here, then we click on OK for us to see the detailed ledger of the customer account. So when it loads up, you'd find what is only remaining is the 98 cents, which the customer overpaid back. But we have managed to supply all the orders or the total order which was placed by the customer. So basically, this is how you account for back orders on Sage Pastel Partner. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.